compulsorily uh, has a compulsory requirement to adopt international financial reporting standards. There was an act, Financial Reporting Act of 2011, that gave birth to a new commission that replaced the previous National Accounting Standard Board that we have. We call it Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. They are responsible for ensuring that all companies in Nigeria comply with the provision of IFRS in their financial reporting. Don't forget, the objective for uh, moving to a more transparent accounting requirement is to make sure that the financial statement prepared by a reporting entity actually represents the true state of financial affairs and is able to bring about what we call uniformity when you compare it with what its counterpart do outside the country. Now, that's going to lead us to what we call uh, a transition period. We are going to be looking at a roadmap for the adoption of international financial reporting as an accounting requirement to prepare financial reports in Nigeria. In 2010, there were consultation with 16 members uh, commission. We have the Corporate Affairs Commission, Central Bank of Nigeria, the Federal and Law Revenue Service, Federal Ministry of Commerce, Federal Ministry of Finance, Auditor General and Accountant General for the Federation. We have the Security Exchange Commission, the Institute of Child Accountants of Nigeria, and all the commission that came together to look at a way of adopting a global set of accounting requirements. And it was actually because of the need to advance the growth and development in the economy need to advance what growth advancement of growth and development in the economy now we are going to be let's just quickly before we move at evaluating the transition to IFRS let's ask ourselves this question why adopt why adopt global sets of accounting requirements. Why do you need to adopt a global set of accounting requirements? Now, as we discussed from previous study, our SAS that any has been issued in the past. This is what we call local regulation. This is what we call local regulation. Then we have IFRS. IFRS. This is issued by IASB that we want to comply with. This is what we call international regulation. The question is, why embrace IFRS? What are the benefits inherent in the application of IFRS in financial reporting? One, the first thing we need to look at is advancement of growth and development in the economy advancement of growth and development in the economy. What do we mean by this? If an economy within is a national boundary or reporting entity, they do not have obligation more than the activities in that territory. By the time you want to engage in activities across the national boundary, you will ha be faced with a situation of having to compare your financial report with what your trade counterpart has at that cost cross national boundary for example if uh, a Nigerian company wants to enter a US stock exchange uh, for maybe as, as a requirement of being listed in the US stock exchange for instance you will be expected to present a global set of financial statements that can be comparable with your counterpart on the exchange. So it might be a very a, a little bit difficult, it might be very very complex for a reporting entity to advance, to grow beyond the national boundary. So when you are looking at spanning your growth across national boundary, uh, application of a global set of standards as a benefit of ensuring that uh, an economy is well equipped to embrace that growth. Another benefit that you have 
from um, application of a global set of accounting requirements is what we call transparency and good governance transparency and good governance transparency and good governance in information disclosures in information disclosures as we said in our previous discussion we said financial statement is meaningless if its contents cannot be easily understood by various users of the financial statement for their economic benefits so one of the reason for going to apply a global set of accounting requirements is to be able to promote a system of transparency and good governance practice among reporting entity so that when you compare your financial statement over time you will be able to leave a track that your position both at the national level and across international level has been well com uh, complied with has been well covered your, it extends your coverage area so uh, the discussion the consultative view by this 16 uh, commission came in 2010 when we were looking at uh, how we can embrace the application of these uh, global sets of accounting requirements. In 2010, which is uh, a period of uh, the discussion, we have uh, 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 what we call uh, a transition uh, date, a, a way of looking at the transition date. If we want to embrace such a standard in such a situation, various reporting entity has to be well prepared structure because you have been leveraging on existing structure you have to make sure that you change most of uh, those structure to be able to accommodate the requirement of the uh, new standard so various sensitization program to promote awareness were in place in 2010 assessment of uh, corporate uh, entity structure and stand in the economy you know it was also done to make sure that uh, you change some element of uh, structure and processes that you have change of accounting software change of any other operating software that you might need to be able to integrate your process to give you the delivery that you have some certain uh, aspect of legislation we also have to be repealed because uh, a global set of st uh, standards accounting application is designed to be flexible is designed to move as situation changes why by law the rules and regulation that you have your uh, law that you have been the, the, the company law that you have been treating is designed to be static when situation change except you change that aspect of law it does not move to address that situation so if you want to embrace a global set of accounting requirements you need to make sure that uh, you change some aspect of law that will make it very very stringent for the application of that uh, accounting requirement to be embraced so various laws in Nigeria for example were repealed various laws that give rise to stringent application was repealed some were reviewed to be able to uh, make the uh, financial information process to be more uh, embraced various training retraining of staff was also done to make sure that uh, the knowledge required to be able to you know transparently key in into this process was also done and that was done as a preparatory a form of a preparation for embracing those new set of standards and that was done in 2010 we also have some planning impact uh, analysis and transaction adjustment that was done during this period now uh, we need to just quickly look at uh, what we call uh, transition dates. We need to look at what we call transition dates. We need to look at uh, what we call the reporting dates. The reporting dates. These two um, notation they are very key when for our discussion of. Uh, the uh, embracement of uh, the global set of uh, accounting uh, requirements.
that we are about to discuss. The transition date, because of the various awareness program that has been going on, in uh, that was uh, embraced in 2010, every entity will have to reorganize its process to be able to embrace that change. So you will see that between 2010 and 2011, 2011 will ultimately be a transition date, a year that uh, every reporting entity is expected to have test drawn the, he the preparative effort that it has in place to be able to ensure that uh, the conversion is easier. So what happened at the transition date is there are so many transaction adjustments to make sure that uh, your account, your account reflects uh, the new processes. So you would have, uh, according to IFRS 1, first time adoption of IFRS, at this stage, this stage is what we call adapt, the, 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 the stage of uh, uh, measuring yourself, we call it transition stage. So after the transition stage, you have an, uh, an option of whether to adapt or what, adopt. Adaptation means you look at, if you look at the process of IFRS and it does not address your full situation, you can take only the portion of that IFRS that address that situation while continuing with your regulation. But if you want to uh, just comply fully with the requirement of the IFRS without going back, we call it what? Full adoption. So it is a, at the transition period where you do most of your transaction adjustment that you were able to identify whether you the, the set of uh, global set of accounting requirement address your information need or otherwise so after your transition date you are expected to prepare your high frs opening statement of financial position and you are expected to prepare your comparative figure what we mean by high frs opening statement of financial position is for example your uh, transition date is described as uh, the earliest, the, the beginning of the earliest period for which uh, an entity is about to prepare a full uh, set of uh, financial statements. If you discover that you are going to prepare a full set of financial statements, for example, in um, if you are looking at presenting a full set of financial statements, for example, full set of the uh, IFRS financial statement if you are looking at 2012 it means you are expected to have a transition period in 2011 transition date will be 2011 so that transition date will look at a date that you were able to test run most of your processes to produce your IFRS financial report if an entity has for instance 1 January 2011 to 31st December 2011 and you want to prepare your financial your first IFRS statement to be f uh, between 1st of January 2012 and 31st of uh, December 2012 note this the opening figure that you are going to use at this date is going to be dependent on the closing figure that you have at this date. So the position of uh, IFRS 1 first time for first time adopters first time adopters is such that this opening figure must be represented to be IFRS compliance. So it says an entity must present what we call opening statement of financial position opening statement of uh, financial position so it is your opening statement of financial position that would have given you a comparative figure that you can use as an opening figure in this year of uh, preparing your first set of financial statements so without the opening statement of financial position you will not be able to uh, prepare a, compre a, a, a comparative set of figure uh, as at the very first day that you are presenting 
your high frs financial statement for public use but we will still be discussing in our further uh, uh, discussion about uh, how how you were uh, expected to be able to prepare a reconciliation statement both uh, for the transition at uh, the transition date and for the comparable com comparable set of the first IFRS financial statement that you are expected to deliver to uh, users of financial statement. Don't forget what we have uh, talked about. You need to be able to master what we call the reporting date. I need to be able the transition date. I need to be able to know what we call the reporting date. Your reporting date is simply the date in which uh, the uh, you prepare your first set of uh, financial statements. It's the latest period to which your first set of uh, financial statements is presented for public use. Other things that you need to learn, you need to be able to learn uh, what we call. Uh, listed and significant public entity listed and uh, significant public entity listed and significant public entity for example if you see from our uh, transition roadmap that we have identified here you will see that the first reporting date is for what is for listed and significant public entity. It means for listed and significant public entity in Nigeria, they have their transition date to be in 2011, while their first reporting date, which is the first day in which they are going to present their uh, IFRS compliance uh, statement, is going to be in 2012. And uh, you need to understand who a listed and significant public entity are. A listed and significant public entity, they are just simply government entities.